uh, as I was listening to um, Jay Moss and uh, Ruby Freeman, I couldn't help but go back to the very public uh, harassment of Kathy Griffin. Now, context is very different, mind you, but the attack and the method of attack is the same. Actually, it's far worse. Uh, it's not. It's not the same. It's far worse. It's. It's. It's degrees or orders of magnitude worse. You know, he started out with attacking a public figure who was doing a routine which is part of her profession, which Kathy Griffin is a comedian and a performance artist, and she was performing. That, that, that's part of her job. Uh, and Donald went after him in an official capacity. And this time with Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman, Donald and his seditious co-conspirators targeted and went after private citizens who were working at election sites and the deliberative process that went into targeting these people to sow fear to bring back the all of those um, stereotypical racial undertones when Giuliani so barbarically threw out drugs and um, suspicion of USB and 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 stealing and it's the way that the way that it came out was just so bigoted and so blatantly dog whistling a certain segment of the population that has been inundated and brainwashed with these ideas that African Americans have a heroin crack problem, they steal, um, they can't be trusted. And and that that sort of inundation is now bring being brought back. Do you see how this process works? How I've been the reason why I've been try, that I've been connecting these working to connect these dots is because it's a huge long four hundred year old legacy that supremacists who call themselves federalists and originalists and all these different ways of and there are some good faith originalists I mean very few because it's a very bad argument. And, um, and, uh, but the rest of that is just a vestige of the Confederacy. It's a vestige of the cantankerous, uh, treachery that I discussed in all of my previous, um, episodes that is deep within the American fabric. It's this combination of, of warped masculinity, understanding of machismo, what is, what is dom like determining the hierarchy of social power through sheer brawn and, and the crisis within the American collective male that brews if you don't come to terms with that. We are experiencing a, 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 a in, you know, sort of an inflection point in that specific history of American gender and masculinity. Very few people talk about it. And if you go to college and study gender studies, people roll your, you know, roll their eyes at you, but it's, this is that pervasive and it links all the way back to what Ms. Moss and Freeman experienced, the bigotry, the misogyny, the racism, 
all in those few words that Rudy Giuliani spit out. They withstood that. And they had the courage, the private citizens, small business owner, election worker, and their matriarch. They were all harassed, all of them. They were all threatened. They all fear for their lives and their reputations now. They have no reason to. And in fact, I pray, I pray that Lady Ruby and Ms. Moss get really good pro bono represent, uh, legal representation so they can go after Donald and his campaign on tort claim charges in civil court. They have very strong cases. I mean, just off the top of my head, there's intentional tort of intentional infliction of emotional distress. Now, there are many other charges. I mean, you can say they, they there are, you can say they, I mean, there may even be good assault a tort claim against the campaign against Rudy Giuliani for the, his specific usage of those words and the context of those words and the prejudice that it creates and sets into motion. Okay. Now I'll end this part by saying kudos and thank you, Lady Ruby and Lady Ruby's mother and Shay Moss, y'all are the best, and you are the reason why not only our republic will survive, but our republic deserves to survive.